I'll tell you the story of autism at work. And by the way, I'm standing here because I have notes and I, I don't have the story memorized all the time. I like to keep it fairly consistent. But five years ago, a nonprofit came to us, came to our HR partner, our CIO, who was my boss, and, and came to us with the concept of autistic people have great talent, um, you know, gave us lots of stats, but they're highly unemployed and they're unemployed because traditional interviewing techniques will not amplify what they're good at. We look for the strong handshake, the great eye contact, just the right length of answer, and we walk away from talent every day because of it. And we got it. it right away we connected with the, with the concept, but we, we said we have, we're, we're a quarter of a million people. How the, how the heck are we gonna change you know, tens of thousands of recruiters to interview differently? How am, I, how am I going to get managers to be at the same degree of acceptance and understanding of autism? Because we knew we'd ha we have, have to educate the uh, non-autism individuals. Anyway, we liked it more than we were, um, we were scared about the what ifs. That's the punchline there, right? And so it took us about a year. We wanted to find a partner who A, knew technology, and B, was working in this space. And luckily, there was one down the road from us in Delaware. And they came in, they helped evaluate the jobs, evaluate the site, find people, train people, and train us to be better managers of people on the spectrum and to uh, engage and include, importantly, include people in the spectrum. Um, so. That took a year to get all that in place and, and sign a contract. Four and a half years ago, we started our first pilot. Um, and this is where kind of the, the journey begins. Four individuals in one type of role in one location in Delaware. And they were doing software testing. Everyone know what software testing is? How many were in the last session about neurodiversity? Anybody? Yeah. So they talked about, um, Often with autism, good jobs are A plus B equals C. Another way I describe it is if you have clear rules and clear outcomes that are expected, expected results, it may be a good candidate for somebody on the autism spectrum. And software testing certainly is that. It says, enter this, enter that, you should see this. If you don't, it's a fail. If you do, it's a pass. More complicated, but that's the gist of it. So we, um, we put these four people in. And we got, a, we got a, an inkling of something great was about to happen when we gave them their first week's worth of training, the corporate required training that you do online. And we budgeted three weeks and it was done in two and a half days by every one of them. So we knew they were really quick and they could recite parts of the rules back to you. So those were good indicators. But then they started doing the work. And what we found after six months was these four people doing software testing in a group of 30 people, so the other 26 were, were not neurodiverse, the people on the spectrum ranked out of the 30, first, second, and either third, fourth, or fifth every single month. And their productivity and quality was, I always forget this number, 48% uh, higher than the rest of the group on average. Right, so I said, oh, we're on to something. What we loved about that is um, it reinforced our premise that we're doing this for the talent. We're not doing this to be nice or charitable. And by the way, I realized, I should have told you, I'm not going to use any slides because I figure you've seen a lot of slides today, right? So you good with that with just storytelling? So 40% higher productivity, always top ranked. It was an apples to apples comparison. In other words, we did not give simple work to the uh, people on the spectrum. The fourth week of every month, everyone did work from the same pile, everyone on the team. So that was a good time to measure it. So we said, okay, good. It's, they're fulfilling the promise that we thought they would, you know, dedicated, strong, uh, strong fit of people to roll. Let's try another type of job. And we went out to Columbus, Ohio, tried a different type of job. Um, still rules bound, um, super heavy volume. We hired two people there, more dramatic results, 90 and 140% higher productivity and much quicker ramp up time. The first person we hired, Mohammed, uh, he was operating at speed in his second month. It's usually expected that it takes four months to get there. He was there in two. Then Passion A joined and they just took off. 
when executives start hearing um, numbers like 90 and 140 percent higher productivity, that math just thrills them, right? Because they're thinking, I can get two people's worth of work for every person in some cases, right? They like that math. It's, it makes good business sense. So these things are feeding together. And you know the, the story is being told around the company, and people are hearing about it, and we're going to town halls and telling, and more managers are coming and wanting to hire. The difficulty in a large organization with that is you can't go too crazy because you want it to be a durable program. You want it to succeed. You can't just let anyone interview somebody on the spectrum. You have to accommodate differently. And so nonetheless, we had enough controls around it. We had changed interviewing techniques for when people do disclose. We don't do panel interviews. We'll allow an advocate to come with the candidate. We don't ask, where do you see yourself in five years? We don't ask, what would you do questions? We ask, what did you do or what do you do? questions that can, can lessen the abstraction and the answer <laughs> and give more concrete evidence. So as we were trying to build in little pieces of durability, you know, we were looking at um, a growing deficit, especially in technology jobs, where there were, the economy was improving in the, U improving in the US and in Europe. The job market was certainly improving and there were less candidates, especially in things like cybersecurity. So our CIO at the time said, James, I want you to take this. I want you to just make it a program across the world. And, and we did. I unplugged from my regular job. I started doing that. I'll skip ahead now uh, to today. Uh, four and a half years later, we're at 154 people, which sounds great, right? From four to 154, a short time. I don't think that's the big story, right? Um, people think with autism, and certainly Kim and, um, Kim and Henry, you know, some people might not even perceive differences in them. Uh, we do have a, a pretty wide range of people in the company, but I think people generally, unaware people, think, ah, oh, you're putting everyone in the mailroom and, you know, they're doing very simplistic work, and that's just not the case. I mentioned we started in one role, then the second role. Now we're up to 40 roles, and it's everything from personal banker, so dealing with high net worth clients, very customer facing, all the way to somebody who's sitting in front of a desk and just doing data entry low interaction. That is part of the breadth of the spectrum. We have not yet dipped into the nonverbal, non-communicative pieces. We want to deepen the spectrum, and we think we can deepen it through our partnerships with the people who do our facilities, who do our AV work, who do our groundskeeping, so that we keep getting deeper into the spectrum. The other aspect of um, the people we've hired is we've got numerous levels of entry into the bank. So very entry level would be your, um, your interns or your apprentices, then analysts, associates, vice presidents, EDs, execu executive director my level, and then managing director a level above me. We are now present in every one of those, um, every one of those levels. If you notice on the tape, I said, I want to get to MD, and we did. And I didn't realize this tape is not that, that video, I should say, is not that old. And we went from 80 to 154 in, I think, a year and a half. Um, the other thing, promotion rates. Um, we, we, in general, don't hire people into jobs. We hire people into careers at J.P. Morgan. And that was always a premise along with the, uh, with the Autism at Work program. So several of the individuals have Got, have been promoted. Uh, one young man, one of our first hires, moved from technology into the business and then got a promotion and a promotion. 24% of our software testers have been promoted to software engineering. And just to give you perspective, if I look across all of JP Morgan, um, that, that promotion rate from software, engin uh, software tester to engineer is 8%. So the autism people are 24%, three times greater promotion rate in that class. I think that's a, that's a good sign of um, success. So I've talked about the business successes, and it's important that I talk about the individual successes, which are metrically <coughs> much harder to, to demonstrate, right? But I think of some of the individuals who, um, you know, when they got there, they worked all together in a little huddle in a room and now have gone out and they're embedded in their, their teams, a mix of all different types of people. Um, and they're succeeding quite well. Uh, one guy, Brian, who was tremendously anxious, 
uh, just speaking. He would shake, violently shake. He got so nervous. And now he stands up and leads a, what we call a daily scrum every day, and he's calm as a cucumber, as they would say. So you see that. I've lost count of the number of people who have gotten their driver's license for the first time in their 30s, who have moved away from home for the first time. Um, one guy, um, Augustine, first time I interviewed him, he was kind of disheveled, wrinkled shirt, you know, scraggly beard. And then we hired him, and then probably six months later, I check in. And, and he's in Columbus, I'm in Delaware, so we, we have video monitors. And he gets on the screen, and I don't, I don't recognize him. He's got this sharp haircut, fitted shirt, clean shaven. And then his brother, who also works for us, told me he's also got a girlfriend now. So, so this is good that um, we're, we're helping people. And by the way, the same, the same person, uh, because uh, Augustine's brother wrote to me a couple of weeks ago, they were born in um, Argentina. And, but they had come here when they were young. And Augustine, who went to a very good school, 3.9 out of 4 in his GPA, um, he was like working at, at, our, at a loading dock, basically. He was considering, until he found J.P. Morgan, he was considering going back to Argentina because he just didn't feel like he belonged here or anything was going to work out. And his brother called me um, recently and told me he became a U.S. citizen, which just made my day. Like he was going to, now he found, his, he found himself here in our midst. So I thought that was great. Um, two last points. One on durability factors, right? So I mentioned some of them in the, be in the beginning. When we were taking this on, we knew we had to interview differently and we had to get more recruiters to interview um, and get to the core of what the person's good at, not find out if they're a great social extrovert, right? And so we've taken good, good steps there, but also uh, making sure when we do hire, we think of providing support of the person on the spectrum, not just upon entry, which we do really well, but throughout, right? A buddy through the first period of time, a mentor over time to help with that career progression. And we've put all of these factors in place. But then also, um, you know, around uh, accommodations, there really haven't been many accommodation requests, mostly noise canceling earphones, or I want to sit in this desk. Those are easy. We do that all the time. Um, we're also, we haven't done this yet, but you know, a lot of these people, it's their first job and their first income, and they spend the money very poorly, right? They buy video games, we noticed. They buy a lot of bad food. And so um, we're, again, a great bank. We know how to tell you how to manage your debt and how to invest your money. So we've designed some courses that we're going to get to people so that they are saving for themselves. Um, so. And then some other durability factors, support for the Fuller team. We, we bought initially from a UK company called Optimize, uh, very situationally uh, specific video uh, modules about autism. And the purpose was to train non-autistic people um, generally about some, some ways to deliver information to people on the spectrum. Then we supplemented that further with our own, we built our own online uh, primer, very short. And then we developed like three hour uh, classroom sessions. So depending on the need of the group, we, uh, we have three different ways to, to educate people. And so far we've, um, we've educated over 2,200 employees and 7,000 managers in the company. Uh, so that, that speaks to our investment in the long, long, uh, long term. Um, we freely give away the information. We're part, we're a founding member of the Autism at Work Employer Roundtable, and we want to keep giving this to other companies to do. Importantly, and this goes into our big ideas, we got to get out of the tech company world, out of the banking world. We got to get into farming, me uh, industrial, mechanical, supermarket, bakery, right? Because then you can get to different regions of here. Uh, and in the U.S. and in India and in other places, um, and you can start crossing into new industries and and affecting people who are at different points on the spectrum. So um, that's one point. And the other point is, um, you know, we very much want to change societal attitudes about autism. Once upon a time in the U.S., child was was diagnosed and the child almost disappeared from social life. The family didn't really engage. 
the education system wasn't set up to support. Certainly employers weren't hiring people who were known to be autistic. India struggles with that a little bit right now, but we have successfully placed people in India and the conversation's changing. So having that, that influence upon attitude of society mm -hmm. and then governmental policy uh, would be the last, um, last area. So that's, um, that's the Cliff's Notes version of, of our Autism at Work program. And I know Becky's here. Becky, did I leave you enough time? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do at the end is uh, answer any questions you have. Okay? Great. Thank you.